We are now here with Stony Brook University's Director of Russian Language, Anna Gisharik. Anna, thank you for joining oh. us today. Hi, thank you for inviting me. So you, you teach Russian here at Stony Brook and you're Ukrainian? Yes, I was born and raised in Ukraine and I came to the United States in the 90s. Um, and uh, I've been teaching at Stony Brook uh, in the Russian program in the European languages for many years. Are your family and friends still in Ukraine? Yes, some of my family, uh, I don't have m much family left, unfortunately, anywhere, but um, some of my very close friends are still there um, and some of my family as well. Um, oh. I'm, from, I'm sorry, I'm from the second largest city in Ukraine, which is called Kharkiv. How have you taken this, this news? Um, this is at the same time horrifying and expected, unfortunately. There was uh, little surprise and, of course, a lot of anguish. I found out when uh, it was about 10.30 p.m. our time, 5.30 a.m. in Ukraine, when a very close dear friend of mine from Kharkiv wrote to me, suddenly I was preparing to go to sleep and I suddenly see a message uh, on my phone and he wrote, we woke up from explosions, I think the war started. And then I went on CNN and then I read the news. So you'll always remember that message? For sure. Your city, Kharkiv, was the most impacted and the first impacted in Ukraine. What does your city look like now? Well, um, it's, it's it's very difficult to get information. There are a lot of fakes out there too, fake news. You know, I can only see what my friends send me. And uh, I saw explosions around the city at night, huge ex explosions from missiles. And um, my friends, uh, you know, they have to sleep um, in a subway, in a subway platform turn bomb shelter because they don't have uh, enough bomb shelters. How, how do you feel like we can perhaps support Ukraine and everyone involved from America? Well, I mean, it's of course it's important to voice uh, our support for Ukraine and to uh, name things as they are uh, without being too polite, if I can say that, because there is a lot of politics around. And um, I understand that the governments are afraid of Russia and are afraid of Putin, maybe not militarily, although militarily as well, but just because, you know, he's one of the biggest uh, exporters of oil and gas and all those things that support the world's economy. So uh, governments are afraid to anger him. But uh, honestly, the situation didn't start just yesterday. The situation started a long time ago, and um, a proxy war in Ukraine has been going on for eight years. Uh, the Crimea, the Ukrainian peninsula, was annexed, occupied by Russia eight years ago, and the world just let it happen. The sanctions were very mild, and now we have what we have now because of that. So I think we should protest, and I think we should tell our government that how we feel about it. Uh, some of my uh, American relatives here in the United States already called their congressmen and their um, you know, local uh, officials to say, just left messages, you know, uh, that we support the Ukraine. And I think both Republicans and Democrats at this point are saying, they're saying different things as usual, but um, the message is we need support for Ukraine. And we need to stand up to Putin and to Russia because he is not going to stop here. So if countries think that Putin is going to just, you know, take Ukraine now and we kind of let it slide and that will be the end of this conflict, well, you know, they have more things coming. Let's hope that the future is a little brighter. I'm so sorry my heart goes out to you and your friends and your family and everyone Thank dealing you. with this situation. That's it for today. Thank you, Anna, for your time. Thank you.